All right. So let's get started for today's session. So today's session is basically on Node.js and MongoDB, as I will give some introduction uh, about what is Node.js and uh, why it is uh, important for our uh, internship program and what is MongoDB and what are the best cases means, what are the uh, practical use cases of MongoDB and why we have chosen MongoDB for this internship program. All right, and why I am encouraging all of you to learn uh, MongoDB. All right, so let's start with Node.js. So we all know that uh, there are two parts. So in the first session, I said there are two parts of web development. So normally there are three parts of specialization of web development. First part is the backend development, right? Second is the, what is the second part? Is the frontend development. And the third part is, what is the third specialization that we can do? What is the third specialization? Third specialization is the, yes, it is the full stack development. Okay, so yes, so Node.js comes in the backend part. So normally we know traditionally we know so in your college if you have uh, used uh, Java. So then uh, have anyone uh, uh, written any program in uh, JEE? JEE actually. Okay, no. Anyone else has written program in J2E, uh, J2E, JSP? servlets okay or have we used php to write backend services or uh, what else python in uh, say django in uh, in python you can use django you can use uh, django framework for web development right okay okay yes so if you someone have used php so, so if you have yes, use PHP, then Django, then you know that these, these things, they actually run on the server end, right? And traditionally, what we know is that JavaScript runs on the browser. All right. So JavaScript runs on the, it, it, it gets downloaded whenever we visit any website, it gets downloaded on the browser. Then it, the browser compiles the JavaScript and executes it and shows the result. Okay. So what is JavaScript? I said in the very first session, if if the HTML is the skeleton and CSS is the skin, then JavaScript is the, what is that? Yes, JavaScript is a brain, okay, it's the soul. So without JavaScript, our, uh, our, our, our application or the website should, it would be only a view only website. Okay, like what we had in web 1.0. Okay, so JavaScript made it possible to to interact with the website, okay? So means uh, you can have a form and asynchronously you can show the result to the user. Uh, so all the nice experience we have right now on the web. So if you visit some large websites like Flipkart, Amazon, so so there you will see a lot of UX there, uh, there they have on their websites. Okay, so and uh, they in, in if you consider UX, that, term, that means that how simply you can show some information to the uh, user and how you can make the every, make everything interactive. All right. So in that case, this is important in, 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 in for browsers to make it uh, smart, to make to give it a soul or to give it a brain. Okay. And uh, earlier we used to know that JavaScript can only run on the browser or, or in the website on the client side mainly but when node.js came into picture then we, we we came to know that we can also execute javascript on the back end as well so javascript can also manage the server end as well okay so how it does that it have it ha it uses the chrome's v8 engine so chrome whatever chrome is using to display the result on the browser that same engine is installed in the backend and we can write JavaScript there to create our services. Okay, that means our brain and soul, we, uh, using Node.js, we can add this brain and soul in the backend as well. That means backend is in JavaScript, frontend is in JavaScript, so everything becomes, everything becomes JavaScript only. Okay, so in that case, that's why we know right now what is the most popular uh, language right now, the programming language. 
that is JavaScript, right? So you will get most jobs in JavaScript. You will get most stack overflow questions in JavaScript. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether it is backend, whether it is frontend. So JS is everywhere, literally. Okay. So this is a formal definition of Node.js. Node.js is an open cross-platform JS runtime environment. Okay, and it is a popular tool for almost any kind of thing. So if you are looking for any application or any web application where you have you only have the APIs, in that case also you, you can use Node.js. If you are building any application that also have API plus some sort of UI component as well, there also you can use Node.js. Okay, so any kind of project you can use Node.js. Node.js runs on the V8 JavaScript engine. It is the core engine that is developed by Google. So Google's Chrome's browser, it uses this engine by heart. I mean, it, it uses this engine in its heart to compile and show the result to us. Okay, and that's that's why Node.js is so performant. Okay, so the third point that I was mentioning, the third point as I was mentioning that a Node.js application runs in a single process, a single thread without creating a new thread for every request. Okay, so Node.js is a set of IO primitives in its standard library that prevent JavaScript code from blocking and generally libraries in Node.js. Okay. So libraries in Node.js are written in non being paradigm, making uh, the blocking behavior uh, the rather uh, exception rather than a normal. Node.js runs in single process without creating a new thread for every request. The fourth point is that when Node.js Node.js performs any I/O operation like reading from the network or accessing from the database or the file system. So instead of blocking the whole thread and wasting the CPU cycles waiting, Node.js will resume the operations when response comes back. And uh, this is why the, that, 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 that behavior allows Node.js to allow thousands of concurrent connections uh, with a single server without introducing the burden of thread concurrency. Uh, which actually could uh, be a source of significant bugs. Okay, that means these are the five or five high points that I would like to mention uh, about Node.js. Okay, so let's see what is the uh, what is the history means uh, how Node.js came into picture and what is the evolution that has happened over time. Okay, so Node.js was born in the year two thousand nine. Okay, and in later in two thousand ten. Express is born. So anyone knows what is Express? Okay, if you know, it is fine. Yeah, okay, it is a it framework. It is actually a framework that is developed on top of Node.js. Okay, so Express framework, what it what it gives that it gives us the view layer, uh, layer makes it easy to do routing and, uh, and all. Okay, then after that, later in in that year only. 2000 socket IO is born. What is socket IO? Anyone knows what is socket IO? Socket IO is a uh, is, is a web socket service that we can have on the uh, uh, on, on, so that we can implement on the Node.js application. Okay, that that makes the socket implementation so easy. So what is web socket? You can you can learn that. You can just Google it and you will you will know. Say there is a chat feature. Everyone saw the chat feature on Facebook, right? So you can in Facebook, you can send messages to your friend. And in the chat window, so uh, once, whenever you will send uh, an open chat window, and that they, they, they would get that uh, message instantly without the whole page being refreshed. Okay. So we have seen this, right? So so this, uh, this kind of socket IO kind of a framework comes into picture, which sends those messages using web sockets. So in that case, you, there is no need to refresh the page or there is nothing called say polling kind of a feature. Say if, every 10 seconds, they are uh, polling uh, the uh, data from the server. It is not like that. Okay, so socket IO is born for this purpose. So to uh, to solve the uh, web socket issue, okay, means the web socket, uh, uh implementation easier after that in the year 2011 
npm 1.0 is released so what is npm 1.0 Yes, so NPM is the node package manager which uh, we normally use to manage uh, different uh, versions of a node package. So we have a lot of libraries which are available uh, on the uh, The package itself is a NPM model which you can use in node design. Then in the from the year 2012 onwards. We have seen a rapid adoption uh, for Node.js. So who is using Node.js? And the question should be who is not using Node.js? So right now from large companies like Twitter, uh, say uh, from Twitter, Facebook, Flipkart, everyone is using Node.js for their backend services. Okay, so so most of these, these large companies, they are used to use the uh, Ruby on Rails or Go, something like that. Uh, and some of the services are still there using the old legacy technologies, but the new services they are introducing, most of them are written in Node.js because, uh, because of the performance, because of the uh, behavior, like it runs on single thread. So that, that makes us easy to run, uh, so, so process concurrent request uh, a very uh, easy way. Okay, that's why we saw, we saw a high adoption rate uh, for Node.js in multiple projects. Okay, so what is the difference between the Node.js and the browser? Again, again, what the, this thing I have already said in the introduction section. So where both Node.js and uh, and and the and the browser, uh, they use JavaScript as their programming language. So our browser itself is is developed uh, using the Java uh, Node in using JavaScript. Okay, so in our browser, the most of the time we are interacting with the DOM means the document object model and but in case of node.js we do not have anything such as tom because there is no browser in the back end of course because that that's why there is no window but we do have the access to the certain other apis uh which through which we can access the file system we can access the several uh, several other hardware features as well okay so that is the basic difference between node.js and browser then after that uh, another important topic comes uh, as we are discussing about Node.js, that is the event loop. Okay, so what is event loop? What is event loop? Anyone knows? Event loop. Okay, if you do not know, then it is fine. As I said, as I said, that by default, our computers used to be synchronous okay and event loop came into picture and it explains how node.js can be asynchronous and can have a non-blocking io what is non-blocking io non-blocking io means one io operation is, is not interfering with other io operation okay so node.js javascript code runs on a single thread and that is there is just one thing happening at one time okay so there is some not like the multiple things are running in parallel and things are not in sync it is not like that all right so we'll see one example of node.js in the few next next few slides okay then after that after that uh, before showing you an example of event loop uh the, uh, the, the we should know about call stack what is call stack means how Node.js is processing each and every line of code. Say you have written 10 lines of code in Node.js and how it is processing the requests one by one, how it is processing the lines that is written in the program one by one. So that it maintains, for that it maintains a stack, okay, that we call a call stack. So the call, in call stack, as we know the default behavior of stack, so whatever comes last, it goes out first. Okay, the same thing happens for the call stack as well. So whatever, enters last that goes that go, gets executed first and whatever comes in the first that executed in the last okay so the event loop the event loop continuously checks the call stack to check if there is an, any function that it needs to run okay so it can see it's a bucket so in in which in which it stores all the line of code and then it executes one by one after storing all line of code in that bucket it executes that uh, those those lines one by one from the uh, LIFO pattern using the LIFO pattern that we already learned in data structure in our college days, right? So while doing so, it adds any function call uh, 
uh, it finds to the call stack and executes each one in order. Okay, so how it executes in order? So I will show you one example. So let's take this is a simple example. Say uh, this is the ES6 syntax which I have written. So you can also uh, replace it with the functions. So this is nothing but a function. So I have I have defined a function called bar which is printing an uh, and console log called bar okay and there inside uh, there is another function called baz and it is also uh, doing a console log called baz okay and there is another function called foo which is doing a console log for itself apart from that it is also calling the bar and baz function okay so there are the three functions that we have defined bar baz and foo okay so bar baz and foo is defined now if we make a call to the foo function okay so what will happen so can you see the screen on the right hand side there is a picture is the picture clear to all of you okay okay fine so if the, if the picture is clear to all of you so now what node what node this does is okay and then after that to execute in order to execute this foo function but it check first it checks the console log foo okay then it it executes this console log after that the call stack you can see here the call stack is empty only the foo function is there after that then it, it comes this bar function then there comes the bar function so the calls in call stack we have now the bar function now the, the now the request comes here so now it checks the bar function so inside bar function there it checks that there is a console log so it it it, it includes this console log into its call stack and then it later executes this 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 console log okay after executing that there there is nothing inside that function and it deletes it deletes that bar function from the call stack then there is only the foo function after that in the next line there is a baz function that i am calling here so it, it includes it inserts this uh, pushes this baz function into the stack and then after that it checks what is inside this baz function then there is also another console log it it also pushes this thing pushes this console log baz into the call stack and then after executing it it pops it from the stack and then later it checks inside bas function there is nothing and inside foo function there is nothing to execute then it makes the call stack empty so this is how the whole thing works in case of a node.js call stack okay so this flow is important to understand because if you are performing any uh, any api call and then in the next time if you have this bar and bas function so what node.js would do is that it will make the api call for sure but in the bar and bash function will get executed next so it will not wait for the network call to complete okay this is one uh, problem that we normally face when we start the implementation in node.js but this is something which you also which you should keep in mind when you are you are working with node.js to handle that uh, we have several other mechanisms like the callback the promise the async await is there so i will later explain how did that those things becomes helpful okay now the example that i have given in the previous uh, slide so there is a one one simple iteration of event loop is given here so for first iteration it executes this foo function then there is a console log foo then it executes the bar function inside that there is a console log bar then there is a, a, a bash function inside that the console log bash is there okay this is how the event loop uh, it is iterating over the code that is written on the function all right now now let's check what is the asynchronous programming and what is callback so the callback is something which you will uh, hear more often in case of a node.js application because in node.js uh, everybody have to write a callback because without that callback so uh, because of this asynchronous behavior if you are making any external call say you are writing to database or say you are, uh, are making a network call to some external service so before getting that uh, service response that other next 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 line of lines will follow the implementation okay so that's why that's why this asynchronous behavior is important and you should keep in focus 
on that one and if whenever you would study or not just in that uh, tutorial that i have given uh, so you should you should you should uh, learn this specific section uh, more carefully and you should put some more attention to this part okay so computers as i said computers are asynchronous by design okay and javascript are is asynchronous by uh, is synchronous by default that is it is single threaded this means that code cannot create new thread and it cannot and to run in parallel okay say here i have a code it's like a, a constant a is defined b is defined and c is equal to a multiplied by b now if you put a console log c so it will print the console and there is a do something method okay so javascript is born inside the browser means it, it, it came from the browser and its main job in the beginning was to respond to user actions Whenever JavaScript came into picture, so it was designed as the user interface. When the user clicks on a button, it will interact. Whenever user uh, it's, it hovers the mouse over, over any say any button or any UI element, then how that would interact? That is, that is what JavaScript do previously. There is an on change method. Means there is a say input field. If the input field value changes, then what will happen? Say there is a form. Whenever the form would submit, then what would happen? So JavaScript was designed to cater such behavior. Okay, it, it is. It was designed to handle such user uh, interactions. Okay, so so that that was that was the the main reason. Now, how it could do this with a synchronous programming model, right? This is a question. This is why the callbacks come into the picture. Okay, so we don't know. Or we, or we don't know when the user would click a button. So you define an event for the click event, right? So say this is a simple JavaScript code. So there is a button. So I'm just getting it by document.get element by ID button. Then there is an add event listener click. So now on this click event listener, you can do some perform, you can perform some action, right? You can do a, give an alert, you can do a validation, you can do a form validation, you can make a network call, anything that you can do. Right, but for that, you have to have this event listener function, and inside this event, there is a callback function. Means whenever this event would happen, then something you have to execute. This is something which is called a callback. Okay, means whenever some event would happen, on that event, I have to do something. So I cannot do that whenever the page load is right. So whenever the page would load, that time I cannot make the network call. I can only network 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 call whenever the user would click the button. Say in your weather uh, application, whatever you are going to build next means the API integration part. So there you cannot show the uh, weather uh, details of a city that the user have not entered on the search box. So there in the search box, say user would type Bengaluru and there is there is a submit button. So on the submit button, click only, you can, you can make a network call you can make a network call to external service then you can face data for bengaluru right so you can do you cannot do that on the first initial page load so so that is why the callback is important and this is a callback a simple example of a callback okay so in in, in textbook uh, uh, definition a callback is a simple function that's passed as a value to another function okay so this 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 uh, arrow arrow function is passed as a value to another function that is the add event listener function and it only be executed when that event happens so it will only be executed when this click event would happen understood my uh, my concept whatever i'm trying to explain here is it clear guys now let's check what is the promise what is javascript promise uh, just a minute I'm getting a call. Uh, it's important. Give me a moment. Yes. So, okay. So, what is promise? So, promise is a commonly defined as a proxy for a value that will eventually become available. Uh, let's. Uh, so, this, the definition is not quite understandable. Uh, let me give you an example. So, uh, so say you have something say you have a network call say you for your weather application so you are making an external network call right say to external network call to external service 
say for that application we will use the open weather map okay okay so i will take you to the open weather map website so there we have we have to register for the api so we have to make a call to that uh, external service now say uh, say if you are trying to access that service uh, from our javascript now what will happen uh, if something uh, some some error happens on the server end okay in that case you will get some uh, false data or we will may not get any data as well right so what promise would do is that so if you implement promise there in case of a normal javascript implementation promise would give you a means a certain response means whether whether it is a failure or whether it is a success it would give a response okay if it is a failure then it would give a proper response to you so you can wrap any code inside a promise block which uh, you can uh, if you are expecting that it would give some error all right so that is something is promised so in the next session whenever i will give the live session means a coding session there i will explain how you can implement a promise okay that is if i have to show an example then we will get uh, you will get a detailed understanding for this thing okay so there are two states for promise one is uh, one is the resolved state and another is the rejected state so yeah, so so either either it, the, re the request would resolve or the request would reject so how that uh, that that works that i will show you in the next uh, live coding session okay so there are few other uh, node.js concepts as well like async await event emitter uh, http server how you can create a server so that i will show you in the next live session not the not live session then in the next uh, coding session okay and then there is a socket io okay so these are the concepts that you can learn on your own from that course that i have given or you can also do one or do a search on google so in their website in the node.js official website they have a detailed uh, explanation on examples for this concept async await event animator the http server and socket IO. so http server is something which i will uh, cover uh, in detail on the uh, on this on the on the thursday or the saturday session okay so let's check so let's let's move forward to mongodb so if anyone of you have any confusion regarding uh, node.js you can drop that message on the on the general thread uh, okay so there i will i will took, uh, i will pick those topics from there and then i will explain i will show a detailed demo on the live session on the next coding live session okay so what is this week's task and this week you have to integrate the weather application with the open weather map api okay so i will i will i will give detailed explanation for that okay how you would if some for some of you you say that i'm a beginner so i don't know how to make a network call so that i will show you also okay okay so should it include database no it should not include database because there is nothing to store you just have to do a network call and show the results on the e1 no? so let's see what is mongodb so anyone has any idea what is mongodb okay so if some of you is it's a no sql db it's a dbms uh, it's a database okay no sql database it's a database for sure those who are writing database you are correct it's a database it is a no sql it is a no sql database or not yes it is a no sql database what is no sql database means there is no structured query uh, language it is actually a document based database so if someone is yes okay okay there's a lot of concept that you already have so let me explain what are the key advantages of mongodb the first thing is the mongodb is a database management system okay it is no sql means there is no structured query language okay though you can query mongodb of course there are some certain query uh, uh, options that are available and that are very advanced okay the first key advantage of mongodb is that it is schemaless what is schemaless what does that mean so anyone can answer what is schemaless what is schemaless means what does schemaless mean means there is no structure of a table okay say you, you have a concept of table right in in our normal dbms okay so in that table first we have to define the name of the columns right so for employee table there is employee name the salary the age 
the department ID and all, right? The joining date, date of birth, everything is gender, everything is there. Okay, in case of MongoDB, so that, that schema we do not have to define. Okay, say, uh, say, uh, say uh, the table is something where we store multiple rows, right? That is similar uh, with sim the similar concept is there in MongoDB as well. That is called collection. So you can say table equals collections. Okay, and every row equals a document here. So this is a document based database. Now, what I'm saying schema less means say inside uh, are the normal database, normal RDBMS like uh, PostgreSQL, MongoDB, the table has a structure and every data present inside that uh, table, say every row, it follows that structure, right? But in case of MongoDB, so every, so table equals collection, right? So inside one collection, I can have multiple data in different, different data format. So inside the data, say uh, in the inside, say, uh, say, let's take an example of the employees collection only here say in one in that in that collection i can have one document i can have one document with the employee name and salary only okay and in another document i can also push the employees department in another document i can also push this age okay or this gender so then there is no structure that is that is something i am mentioning as a schema list okay so the structure the advantage, another advantage is that, that, that is, I think I have already explained, the structure of a single object is clear. So if you open a MongoDB database, so if you have a client installed on your on your system, so clients like uh, you have a RoboMongo or uh, Mongo3T is there. If you install the, those clients in your system, so there you will see if you visualize those, uh, the, the existing data that if it is, if something is present on your system, you will see that the structure of that object is very clear. It is, it is in the key value pair. Okay. So the another key advantage of MongoDB is that as it is a NoSQL database, you can do a very deep query inside it. So, so deep query means in, in case of RDBMS, we have concepts of relation, right? So there is nothing like relation here inside uh, these, uh, these NoSQL database. Okay. Though you can also implement it. There's the, some, some libraries that are, they, they do, uh, make it uh, make the relationships available inside MongoDB as well. But by default, MongoDB keeps a very deep query uh, tools or the query language. Okay. And it's easy to scale out. So this is one major reason why MongoDB is used in most of the large applications uh, nowadays uh, where they do not need uh, a schema. So there you can scale it out easily as there is no specific structure to this. I means this, this first behavior makes it easy to scale. Okay, you can add more servers to it. There is no dependency on the previous data. Okay, so again, why MongoDB? So I have explained the key advantages and then why MongoDB? It is a document-oriented storage. Second, you can index on any attribute. So index is something which you normally do uh, in the primary keys or the foreign keys, right? In the RDBMS. So here you can index on any attribute. You can have a auto sharding. Sharding is something which is related to the performance, means how you can scale, you can horizontally scale your server. So auto sharding is available in case of MongoDB. That is something which I have explained in the last slide, what I said, it is easy to scale, okay? And fourth, you can write rich queries, okay? So that is it for today's, so this is a quick introduction. So in the, in your course, you will get this topic called MongoDB. So there you go and learn, you check those videos once and there you will get an understanding how to get started. Anyway, I will explain in my live coding session as well. So there I will show you how to establish connection between the MongoDB data, between the Node.js application and the MongoDB, how you can insert data to the MongoDB and how you can insert data, read data, uh, update data. So those things I will show you. And then there I will show you how you can create your own API endpoint. Okay. So today I will, I will show you one live example of how you can make an API call uh, to an external service. Okay. So that thing uh, for that. And after that, let, let me explain the action items for this week before going uh, to the live implementation. So the action items for this week's are first, you have to learn and use Node.js. If you just start a little bit, because in the live session, I will explain mostly. 
but uh, but you start with node.js then you start your first you, you try to create your first http server with node.js then learn and use mongodb fourth thing you prepare for the final project means if you the whatever learning you had till now see if it is html css bootstrap so if you some um, if some of you have uh, that that part pending so please do complete your assignments on time and stay prepared for the final project so that that will be announced on the uh, next session okay and there is an assessment test as well in this weekend so so stay prepared for that and that's it for uh, this uh, slides so I will take you to the another web page. So is my screen visible, guys? Yes, so, so I will put the live coding session on YouTube. So there is nothing to worry about. So if you cannot follow the session, then, then you can go to YouTube. From there, you will get it, I guess. OK, so, so if you can check my uh, web page. So in Google, you go to this website called Open Weather Map. Okay. So I'm sharing this link in the. Uh, I'm sharing this link in the chat. You can you can copy this link. You can open this link and copy uh, from in your end. So you go to this website. You do a sign up here in there in there uh, that is free actually. So if, if there is there is paid tire as well, but you do choose for the free tire. Okay, so yes. So inside that you will get these options called API keys. Okay, so there I have a lot of API keys that I've already generated. Do not use my API key. <laughs> okay so anyway these are some have some limitations as well so do generate an api key so there is an option on the right hand side you can give a name to the api key we can generate your key you will get your api key here on the left hand side okay and then on the uh then there is a guide option on top no not this one api yes so in the top you go to api so there is option called current weather data for that there is option called the api doc so in that doc you check what is your uh, what is the you check the uh, url from here okay so let me let me show you how we can get weather information so you just copy this thing you just copy this thing and paste it in your browser then Okay, and in case in place of city's name, say I'm 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 searching with uh, Delhi, so Delhi, and in in app ID I have given my API key. Okay, so the URL is API dot open weather map dot org slash data slash two point five slash weather, where Q Q means the query that something which you can do. So here you have to pass the city's name. Say if the city's name is is Delhi, Bangalore, Kolkata, Mumbai, Chennai, whatever it is, you have to pass it here. Then after that, there is an app ID parameter. Here you have to pass the API key. If you make the network call, you will get some sort of information, right? So here you would see the data is given in the JSON format. So there you will get the city's coordinate. If you want, if you have a map in your design, you can use this coordinate to point a marker on the map. And then uh, on the main section, this is an important section. Here you will get temperature like 291, but these things are in Fahrenheit. Okay, so you can change that by using uh, units. There is another units parameter which you can pass here. So say I would say units is equal to. Uh, I would say it is a uh, it is a metric unit that I will take. Yes, yes. So in Delhi, in Delhi. Right now it is 18 degrees centigrade and it feels like 17. This is the minimum temperature and this is the maximum temperature. Okay, so humidity is 59. So you can show this information in your uh, browser. All right, so that is it, guys. So is it is it uh, is it is it okay? Or anything else? Do you, uh, if you have query. So now how now you may say, oh, sir, how I would make a network call. For that I will show you one simple another simple example. So I will show you 
how you can make a network call. So you have to make a network call, you need to, uh, for that I will create one project called Ajax uh, trial. I will open it my editor. Is my editor visible guys? Editor is visible. Okay, great. So I will create one file called index.html. I'll create another file called script.js. So inside that HTML, I will say uh, HTML uh, default one head and there is a body option. Okay, so and this is a simple uh, HTML. So there is a head, there is a body. So now to make a network call, I will make use of jQuery. So anyone learned jQuery? Anyone learned jQuery? No. So jQuery is another uh, library that is available on JavaScript. Okay, so this is, uh, you can see this is similar to something which we do uh, in uh, say in React. So it is not something like React, but uh, but it is, it is it is one of the most used JavaScript library in, in, the, in the programming world or whatever website you see, most of the websites has JavaScript support. Okay, so it makes it easy to write the JavaScript. Okay, means jQuery uh, makes it easy to write JavaScript. That is that is something. Okay, so let's see if there is any CDN link for adding JavaScript to our project. JavaScript CDN. CDN is something which is called Content Delivery Network. So there we have the. Okay, so there we have the. Uh, JavaScript uh, already uh, deployed so that you can in include in your project. So you do not have to download these scripts on, uh, locally on your system. Okay, so that is how I am importing the uh, CDN and uh, the JavaScript jQuery from PC. Okay, now after that, uh, once it is ready, now, now I will take go to one website called JSON placeholder. Okay. or I will, I will call say this API only. So now, now I will load another thing. I will load my script JS file that I have created where I will write my custom uh, coding, my custom JavaScript code. Okay, so script SRC is equal to script JS. Okay, so inside this script JS, I will write, this is a jQuery code, uh, I would say, when our and has uh, then there is a callback function that you should execute, uh, which would console log say j query loaded. Okay, so and my browser say there is a h1. Okay. So I will go to my local host, then uh, X try. Let's see the way the info in is coming. And if we open the yes, if you open the js console there you will be able to see that the message is coming jquery loaded and in 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 the network tab as well if i check the all uh, all network uh, thing that happened you see that there is html that is loaded properly there is a jquery file that is loaded properly and there is a script.js file okay so these are the few files that are loaded properly and that's why the information is coming so now we will check the documentation for the Ajax. So Ajax call. So jQuery has a very easy to use Ajax call method. Okay, which we will check right now. 
so uh, just a simple example say so take this one i will copy this function so on page load i will make a network call to get data for delhi okay so i will copy this url and in in place of this url uh, thing i will paste the url okay. so here i have the url what the whole url i have placed and i will remove this part now let's do a console log here okay so we will print out this uh, output from our uh, 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 from our whatever data we are getting yes so on page load so okay so on page load i am uh, executing i am making this ajax call i am looking for data of the whenever the data i am getting so this is the callback function I mean, this is a you can say it is a what it say it is a promise or something like that this is not a promise but it is the callback only okay so whenever this thing this ajax function executes there is a done method so inside the done method i will get access to the data whatever data i have received from this api endpoint okay so i am just printing this data on this uh, console okay so the, here i am getting the the city's name and inside main i am getting the all of the information temperature and all okay now let's see here i will make a a, a few placeholder say for h4 city and say inside h another h4 h5 say temperature okay now i would give her a class name say city name and i would give another class name this one uh, class is temperature okay so i would make it empty for so in our application we are not getting anything okay so here you can see that these these two things are empty right now but what we will do is that we will push the data there so how we can do that we can take a reference so we will use this class name to get uh, to get this element okay to do that here we, what we will do there is a dollar me mechanism like we have a document right so here we have a dollar so here i will give say for cities class name dot html so i would replace this value with uh, say data dot name so this would execute this would this would replace the city's name and in case of uh, in case of temperature i will take the class name here so in 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 for, for temperature you replace the html you try to access inside it try to access the main and then uh, you give the temp okay so that means data dot main dot temp refresh save the file and let's see if we refresh our data is getting fetched yes so whenever the data is coming i'm getting the output here okay so whenever the page is refreshed you will get the data so now if you change the city's name here like in in case of delhi if you write mumbai if you refresh you will see for mumbai we are getting the data 28.99 degree centigrade okay so this is how we will get the data now you know how to make an api call so your task use uh, your task for this week is to use this mechanism called ajax uh, in jquery to uh, to take, get the inputs from the, your text field your search box that is present on your weather application you take the weather city's name from there you make the network call so here the, i have i am passing the net, the city's name and static here you have to pass the dynamic city's name and then you have to show the output like this okay so that is it guys for this session anyone has any question anyone has any question guys okay okay can i open the html again okay 
there is nothing there on the HTML. I just loaded two scripts. First is for the jQuery, then is for the uh, my local script file. Then there is a three h one three h uh, header tags. First is for the title of the application. Then there is a h four tag with the class name called city name, and there is a h five tag for class name with temperature. And of this script of JS, I'm just uh, replacing the inner HTML of these to these two uh elements okay so i'm using this class accessor okay so i'm trying to access this element by the class name and i'm replacing that html tags i'm replacing the data with this data all right okay sir where to learn node.js from so node.js is there on that course udemy course that i have given How to implement search that is the task for you there is no they do not need to execute uh, rep, uh, replicate it uh, exactly because you have a search behavior you have to implement the city search okay so so here you have to pass the city's name and you have to make the api call and then have to show data accordingly so you have in your ui component whatever dynamic static data you have you have to replace it with the dynamic data okay so you try to do it by this uh, saturday okay so by that time you try to submit and that's it guys for today if you have any question then you let me know on the uh, on, on chat uh, on the discord uh, session and there i will answer or you can also ask your coaches for the same